Hi folks, we quite often get asked uh, what spares we carry and uh, do we need anything bringing back from the UK or um, is there something someone can um, download as a, as a list of spares that, that we carry and to be honest um, there isn't. Um, we keep a few spares on board uh, mainly um, for the engine but there's other stuff that we, we keep which is about doing the right maintenance at the right time and looking after the boat in such a way that things don't break down because prevention is always better than cure. However, I did put together a short video showing everyone what it is we carry as engine spares and sail drive spares and we thought that that might be useful for those of you who are thinking about A living aboard or B sailing around the Mediterranean. So this list, is, list isn't extensive and it doesn't cover things like you know spare starter motors and alternators and stuff that you won't get in the Galapagos because that's not where we are and when we move on uh, and get, go to places where spares aren't so easy to get, then I will carry more. But until then, this is what we carry. Enjoy the video. And don't forget, like and subscribe now, down here, so that you don't forget at the end. See you later, guys. Hi, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Ant. This is our boat in Pavlis, and Cindy and I have been living aboard for the last five and a half years. Um, we've been asked to do a little video, a shorter than normal video, video on the uh, engine spares that we carry for uh, maintenance and of course uh, over the winter. Uh, we do some major maintenance and overhauls. So without further ado, I'm gonna get straight onto it. Um, first thing that we use, and probably the most important thing, is our service records, our maintenance schedules as well. So what we have here is just a spreadsheet that we made up. We call it a service record. Uh, down one side we have the date, we have the description of the work that we've undertaken, the part numbers used, and the due date for anything that needs to be done again. So, for instance, uh, uh, engine oil changes, we do them about every 350 hours. Now, um, Volvo says 200, 250 hours. We use a synthetic or semi-synthetic oil and uh, we can um, extend that period by another 100 hours or so, sometimes more. Um, now, it all looks neat and tidy, but I can assure you it isn't when we first write them. So, when I do the service in, I write them down with my pirate pencil, and then Cindy transcribes them onto an electronic copy. Whenever we have the printer out from under the bed, we print them up and, um, and renew them, and then they go back into the engine bay. Now, um, why do we keep service records? Well, as I said, it gives us a, a heads up for what maintenance needs to be done and when it needs to be done. Um, and you can just look through the service records to see when you last did something. Because believe me, you will forget once you get aboard when it was the last time you changed your diesel filters or the last time you did an oil change but didn't change the filter. Because we don't change the filter every single time. Um, we tend to do one, one oil change where we change the filter and then the next oil change where we don't change the filter. Um, and that's because we run a large magnet on the end of our um, filters and we keep our oil pretty damn clean anyway. So um, if you have a look at some of our previous videos, we do oil changes and we, we explain the regime that we, that, that we use. This is probably the most important thing in servicing and maintaining your engine, sail drive or your shaft because you um, you need to keep records. Now the, the other thing that this does is if and when you decide to sell your boat, 
having a nice clean engine bay and a service record that shows when you did the works and what was done um, is what um, people will be looking for, especially people who know about boats. Um, it will add value to your boat. So we keep this service record. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put a copy of this on our um, on our website, which is svimpavidus.com. There's a link in the description. I'll put a copy of this on here, on there, as, and you can download it and use it for free. How about that? Something for nothing. A rarity these days. Okay, let's move on. Um, starting at the back of this pole with our uh, filters. So um, our engine has uh, two lots of filters. It has a, a primary filter, which is this one, um, with a water separator built in. It's the CAV type. So it has a big hole in the bottom, um, a glass bowl or metal bowl goes on the bottom and it has a pump on the top and this is a filter and water separator. We keep um, one of these for the winter service and then we keep two spares um, aboard the boat. And that's just in case at some point we can't get one or there's a difficulty in getting them or we get something in our fuel, diesel engines um, don't use all the diesel that goes through the pump. Uh, some of that diesel goes through the injectors and then it bleeds out and returns back to the tank. So it's polishing the diesel as you run the engine to a certain extent. And so doing that keeps the diesel in the tank moving but also keeps it going through the filters. The other thing is that we keep our diesel tanks full and when I say I mean full to the brim. So when we come in for the winter we will fill up two uh, jerry cans or, or uh, jugs which have got 20 litres in them and then over the winter when we're using our heating which is a diesel heating we will um, top the tank up with those so that the tank um, stays full and the reason for that is if you have a tank which is um, that has uh, an air gap in it um, then you can get condensation inside the tank and that condensation makes water drip into the tank the water goes to the bottom of the tank because diesel is less dense than water and it sits at the bottom and that's where your diesel bug problems start when you've got diesel on top of water and this layer um, in the bottom of your tank where the diesel bug can, can breed and, and grow. So um, the, the things that we do to keep the diesel uh, tanks full and keep this regime of the, the diesel continually moving through the engines and through the tanks and the pipework uh, means that we've never had diesel bug touch wood um, in this boat in seven and a half years and in our other boat in 12 years we we haven't had it so there you are top tip for you um, there is one other thing that we do and that is we run a uh, pre-made filter one of these uh, inline filters we run that in the diesel fuel line before it gets to this first separator. So should we get any diesel bug in the tank somehow, then it will get stopped at that first filter and won't clog up the other filters. Um, and that is extremely quick to change. And we can change that without um, taking all the diesel out of the other filters, uh, draining down the engine and then having to um, Re, um, refill the fuel pump and the fuel lines and then purge it all out. So um, there's another top tip for you. Put one of these diesel uh, pre-filters in the line um, and they just literally clip in um, and, it, and it helps a lot. So the other set of filters that we have, these ones, these are for our um, secondary filter so we have our primary filter with a water separator which is like a like a Raycorp filter and then we have this type 
which is of course a screw on cartridge um, you've, all, you've all seen these it sits in underneath um, you fill them up with clean diesel before you start screw them on and uh, that's the secondary filter that goes on the engine again we keep three of those on board one for the winter change and then two spare um, we don't necessarily use Volvo parts uh, because they're extremely expensive they are three or four times the price of the same product from someone else um, I'll give you an example we have three oil filters there this one is a genuine Perkins one because our engine although it's a Volvo it's based on a Perkins engine and then I have two others which are Bosch they are exactly the same filter identical apart from the colors different and they've got Bosch written on them and the difference between the Perkins one and the Volvo Penta one is the fact that the colour's different and it's got Volvo Penta written on it. So this is the Perkins filter, this is a genuine Perkins filter for our D130 engine. I believe it fits the D255 and the D275 and the MD2020 and the MD22 as well there's a whole list of, of um, usages that these filters fit in fact again if you go over to our website www.svimpavidus.com there is a downloadable list which um, has got alternative supplies for diesel filters uh, oil filters and spare parts and on there it tells you what Volvo engines they fit and this one also fits a nanny diesel um, and I believe some of them also fit the Beta Marine and also the Yanmar and this Perkins filter was about £4.50 which is about um, five five and a half dollars uh, US dollars um, and the uh, Volvo Penta one is 16 pounds so uh, you know that tells you why we buy the Perkins or we buy something like the Bosch uh, which is exactly the same filter and a quarter of the price so moving on next thing that we keep spare this is uh, um, auxiliary drive belt what you and I call a, a fan belt Obviously we haven't got a fan on an engine, but we keep a spare one of these. This one has been sitting in this cover for seven years, seven and a half years, um, never been used. In fact, uh, it was £15.95 when I bought it, um, which is now about $17, but when I bought it, £15.95 would have been about $30. So that shows you how the exchange rate has changed never needed to change it we do keep our um, belts our auxiliary belts our fan belts uh, adjusted i've never needed to significantly adjust um, this belt or sorry the one on the engine uh, in all that time other than probably twice just to give it a little tightening um, don't make them too tight, you'll damage the alternator bearings or the water pump bearings. Don't make them too loose, because if it's too loose, um, it will wear out extremely quickly. So we keep a spare one of those. That's kept in one of these waterproof bags in the engine bay. The engine bay's got a little tray in there that we keep the immediate spares uh, to hand in. Um, let's talk next. Um, about these so we keep a spare set of anodes on the boat for all the anodes that we need there's one in the engine bay in the spares another one here these are genuine Volvo um, and the reason they're genuine Volvo is that we buy these from a third party and that third party is um, the maker of our rope cutter so we have 
an Ambassador Marine rope cutter um, stripper. It has to have an anode which is machined out here um, and machined out there so that it fits in this recess and can lock on to our sail drive and then it's held solid uh, by the sail drive and then driven round by the prop and needs to be machined out. So we keep um, obviously one on the sail drive all the time. We need to change these about every two years or so. Um, uh, and we keep one in the engine bay and this one is a spare from, from under the floor where we keep our, our other spares. That's a spare anode for our bow thruster. We've changed the bow thruster one probably, well in fact I know once, we've changed it once in seven and a half years. We've got a plastic prop on our bow thruster. Um, they simply don't erode. Um, they, they, you know, they'll go, well this one's covered in, in masking tape. Um, just to keep the dust and dirt off it but uh, you know they're, they're more likely to corrode under the floor um, than, than they are on the bell thruster so that's our anodes the other anodes that we have um, and I, I always keep one of these as a spare this is the um, anode for our Brunton propeller we have a Brunton auto prop it's been it's a brilliant prop the only thing is the anodes do tend to go a bit quick and they go uh, quick around the bolt holes and the way that we slow that down is to put some nail varnish or some paint um, around the bolt holes that stops them eroding quite so quickly. Um, I've got another one coming back uh, from the UK with David when he comes back um, but I've got one brand new spare in here and this is one that we took off when it was about halfway through, um, and I can't remember why we took it off. Um, but anyway, so we've got that as, a, as an extra spare. So we keep, we keep those on board. So that's anodes. The um, next thing that we keep um, on board is, obviously we keep an impeller kit. This one is a genuine Volvo one, and I would recommend that you either use genuine Volvo or a kit from the maker of your pump. So our pump is a vol on our engine is a Johnson pump. Johnson pumps make kits with an impeller, a gasket, and uh, glycerine, um, and we keep two of these on board as spare obviously there's one in the engine at the moment or in the pump at the moment and the reason I say use the genuine ones is that they they appear to be a better quality than some of the pattern parts that you can buy um, and it's the one thing where you absolutely don't want that to fail um, you know when uh, when it's most likely to fail because they will you know what it's like Murphy's Law they will fill they will fail when you when you most need them um, so you get uh, the uh, impellers there you get a gasket and you get some glycerine which is literally sugar and water um, well, glycerine uh, do not use Vaseline or oil-based products. You'll make it uh, die prematurely. Always use either um, washing up liquid, fairy liquid, or use uh, glycerine. So that's a, another top tip for you there. Um, and as I say, we keep two of those on the boat. I've got a full kit here somewhere with a second new one in but uh, you can see that they they get they're kept up in the floor uh, in our bilges all this lot and uh, they do tend to get knocked about a little bit so some of them you know we have to repackage them like this one and um, put some some uh, tape around them and this one's about to be used because I'm about to do a diesel change but yeah we keep them in their boxes and we sometimes have to retake things and um, 
make a better job of the packaging. So that's our impellers. This one, I'm pretty sure I know, yeah. So this is um, a genuine Volvo part. Again, you can buy this from Johnson. This is a new water pump shaft there. Um, a new set of bearings and a new lip seal and circlips and spacer. So that kit will completely uh, replace the shaft and bearings on our water pump. Um, they do go, uh, they don't last as long as you'd hope that they would. Um, that's the last one that we changed. I've kept that, the reason I've kept that is I was intending to measure the bearings and then order a set of bearings from SKF um, and also a set of lip, lip seals um, so that we've got another kit or we can make up another kit and then when I get near a lathe what I can do is I can just dress this part of the shaft up because this shaft um, has got a little mark in it where the lip seal has cut into the shaft, uh, worn into the shaft, and if I can get on a lathe, I can, uh, I can literally renew that and have a second shaft. And finally, this is another, another kit which I've actually made up. So I have um, a brand new impeller. I have one, one, two extra uh, gaskets for the front of the pump last time I changed the um, last time I changed the shaft on the pump I put a new face plate on this one has about a thou of wear in the front uh, my intention was to uh, clean that up when I got five minutes or of course clean the paint off that side and just flip it round the other way um, there's also a spare cam in there so that I can replace the cam in the pump should I need to. And there's one, two, three spare lip seals there for the same pump. A spare faceplate screw for the pump and spare circlip for the bearings. Also in here I have a set of O-rings. So the four, one, two, three, four of those, four are for my uh, heat exchanger. So on mine, heat exchanger comes out through the front. There are two O-rings at the back and two at the front. So if I need to clean my heat exchanger, um, I've got a spare set of O-rings that I can replace. <coughs> Excuse me. They don't need replacing every time usually if you just soak them in hot water for 20 minutes or so they kind of spring back a little bit and uh, a little bit of glycerine on them when you put them in to stop you catching them and they seal up perfectly well and there is actually another spare pot of glycerine in there for doing just that um, and this o-ring this is also for the pump where, where the, my pump fits back onto the engine body, there's an, there's an O-ring there. Um, and again, I keep a spare of that. You don't need to change it every time, but I've got a spare just in case. So that's my other pump spares. Now, other than those bits, you really don't need to carry a lot of, of spares. Um, I'd suggest that you need to carry enough to do um, an oil change um, if you have a problem with your oil. It's unlikely, to be honest, it's unlikely, but carry at least one spare oil filter. Diesel filters, I'd suggest that you carry two spare and one for your winter servicing, and that's in case you get diesel bug. And if you've got it in a tank, it's almost impossible to, to, to get rid of. You will keep getting it um, unless you have the, the tank properly cleaned. You can buy all these polishing machines, etc., etc., 
and yes they're great but you will be polishing your fuel forever once you get diesel bug in there you've got to get it out and get the the tank physically clean so that it's absolutely sparkling because like any kind of infection if you leave a little bit behind you know you just put clean diesel in and the bug goes oh great lovely nice clean diesel and a bit of dampness i'll start multiplying again so um avoid getting the bug in the first place don't try and deal with it afterwards that would be my advice um so you don't really need to carry loads and loads of spares you could carry a spare starter motor and a spare alternator if you um we're going to cross a major ocean you know um but keep your if you keep your stuff well maintained and serviced you know you won't get these sudden breakdowns um we got access to parts here in europe anyway fairly easily um even though we're in turkey and we're in we're in, we're in asia technically we still can get volvo parts fairly easily the good thing is that we our engine is a perkins and therefore it's used in things like um, the massley ferguson engines in tractors use perkins so you know a lot of the parts are available off the shelf from tractor from tractor dealers here i think the last thing to 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 cover is fluids and lubricants um, we get a really good deal on castrol here in Turkey. Um, I like castrol oils. Uh, they're always in, in good pourable containers. Now, we have a proper a top up container, but um, these are great because these will actually fit down the side of the engine, tucked out the way. And I've got two of these, this one and another one that's full. Um, and they tuck right down the side of the engine uh, they're easy to get at and um, I carry um, 8 litres of oil most of the time which is enough to do two oil changes and then in the winter I I just um, buy another one of these or uh, I w this winter I'm going to buy the bigger one um, because we're going to come out and have the sail drive oil changed as well uh, I'll do that um, and that that um, that means that we can, uh, because our, our oil is the same in our sail drive as it is in our engines, as most Volvos are now, um, I can use uh, the big one and uh, still have some left over. When I've got some left over, I just decant it into this little bottle uh, for top-ups when I'm check it, doing my engine checks. To be honest, uh, I rarely have to put any oil in our engine it doesn't burn any oil at all um, or next to none maybe a quarter of a litre of oil uh, over uh, eight months or so uh, next to nothing so um, yeah that's but we keep we keep that in the there just for top ups um, and then the last thing we've had difficulty getting this this is um, Volvo coolant concentrate uh, for our cooling system um, this is one litre of concentrated um, coolant uh, I think it's about four to one that you run this with um, distilled water for your coolant it's not just an antifreeze the coolant works as a lubricant for your pumps and lip seals so you need to you need to have this in in your engine and you need to make sure that every two or three years you flush all of the old coolant out wash the engine through with distilled water or deionized water to get all the remnants out get the inside of it clean again and then and then top it up so this is uh, the concentrated one we've got that uh, on hand if we need to uh, change our coolant and of course if we do a heat exchange or clean we need to do that um, you need to have that as well that is the most of the engine spares that we carry obviously we carry things like o-rings and and electrical cu um, 
crimps and those kind of general bits that we'll use all around the boat. Um, uh, you, we've shown you those before, but that's the spares that we actually need uh, for cruising, um, and we haven't let those sort of go up or down in the five years. We've kept a, a you know these basics on board all the time. We carry probably far too much more than we need to. Um, but it's nice to know that you have them and you haven't got to go hunting either the internet or uh, go and stay three or four days in a marina while you find you know an oil filter or a diesel filter or something you've got it there and you can change your your oil or your diesel filters at anchor um, without you know spending a hundred pounds or euros a night staying in a in a marina in the med um, because you haven't got the, the parts that you need uh, with you so that's um, that's kind of it really I hope this has been useful for you don't forget um, to like and subscribe um, and um, leave something in the comments I'd love to know what you guys carry on your boats um, if you're doing extended cruising or living aboard um, most people carry far too much more than they ever need. When we left the UK, I had probably three times this much and uh, realised I just simply didn't need to buy it. Especially, as I said, with the, with the Perkin in, uh, Perkins engine, I didn't need to carry all that stuff. Um, but yeah, let us know what you carry. Be, it would be really interested to uh, read in the comments. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share with your friends. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Sail safe.